God's bread, it makes me mad. Day, night, hour, tide, time, work, play, alone, in company, still my care hath been to have her matched. And having now provided a gentleman of noble parentage, fair demeans, youthful, and nobly trained, stuffed, as they say, with honorable parts, proportioned as one's thought would wish a man, and to have a wretched, puling fool, a whining mammoth in her fortune's tender to answer, I'll not wed, I cannot marry, I am too young, I pray you pardon me. But as you'll not wed, I'll pardon you. Graze where you will, you shall not house with me. Look to it, think on it, I do not use to jest. Thursday is near, lay hand on heart, advise. And you be mine, I'll give you to him. And you be not, hang, beg, starve, die in the street, for by my soul I'll ne'er acknowledge thee, nor what is mine shall never do thee good. Trust to it, think on it, I shall not be forsworn. If you'll be my daughter, I'll give you to him. You'll give her to him? She's not an object to be handed over. She's your daughter, a living, breathing person with a mind and a soul. And if she won't, you'll just cast her to the streets, left to hang, beg, starve. Is there no pity? How could you even think to just cast away your child, your only daughter? What could you possibly come up with to justify that? Is there that much hatred in you? To say you'd rather see her die than to have her not marry a man that she simply cannot love. What makes you believe this man to be the perfect suitor for your Juliet anyways? Because he's good looking, rich? about kind or gentle, loving, caring? Did you even think about what your daughter might want, who she might love? She deserves to be happy. She deserves to not have to force herself to live a lie with someone that she doesn't love, pretending to be someone she's not and will never be just for the sake of her father's approval. She deserves a father who will stand by her side, stick up for her and protect her no matter what. Not someone who'll just throw her to the streets the second she disobeys. Do you really want her to join the countless others who are outcasted and disowned by their families and left to rot? Left to make a life out of nothing or kill themselves? The countless others who are shunned for who they love? Shame on you. O oh, thou foul thief, where hast thou stowed my daughter? Damned as thou art, thou hast enchanted her. For I'll refer me to all things of sense. If she in chains of magic were not bound, whether a maid so tender, fair, and happy, so opposite to marriage that she shunned the wealthy curl darlings of our nation, would ever have, to incur a general or mock, run from her guards to the sooty bosom of such a thing as thou, to fear, not to delight. Judge me the world, if tis not gross in sense. Thou hast practiced on her with foul charms, abused her delicate youth with drugs or minerals that weaken motion. I'll have it disputed upon. Tis probable and palpable to thinking. I therefore apprehend and do attach to thee, abuser of the world, practicer of arts inhibited, and out for it. Lay hold upon him, and if he do resist, subdue him at his peril.
Your father's such a great man, he must be so proud. I've heard so many people tell me that, caught up in this air of excellence that seems to follow you everywhere you go. A million dollar smile that the press adores. A model for the young and up and coming entrepreneur to model themselves after. A man that the people believe can do no wrong as he blazes his trail to fame and glory. Who wouldn't kill to be your son and have it all? I guess I missed that memo. See, the admirers, the lights, the cameras, they always seem to catch you at your best. They never get to see the monster that lurks behind those warm eyes and kind smiles. They weren't there in the Buick where you were berating our driver for being three minutes late, for not valuing your time. They didn't hear you at 3 a.m. firing your entire Taiwanese division just because they didn't meet their monthly quota. They didn't see you deport one of our maids and her entire family just because she spilled a drop of wine on the carpet. I was there for it all. You groomed me for excellence. You told me that the world would be mine if I just fell in line with your vision. You told me that we were wolves, kings bred to lead the doe-eyed sheep of the world. And for that, you would have me believe that the thugs I hang out with are poisoning my mind. That they are the ones that have led me astray from the one true path. That they're nothing more than momentary distractions that I should just cast aside and leave to toil in the dirt where they belong. If you've come to drag me back to that life, then I've only got this to say. I revoke your claim to be my father. I deny you the right to make a wolf out of me, for I am proud to run free of your name. I don't have to make tools out of people to make them listen. I don't want to sit on a pedestal looking down on everyone like garbage. I alone have the right to choose where my life will lead me, and I refuse to be another pawn in your game. Your legacy ends with you. And I only hope and pray that I get to live long enough to see your empire crumble and your name forgotten. All was lost. This foul soul of Egypt had betrayed me. My fleet hath yielded to thy foe, and yonder. They cast their caps up and carouse together like friends long lost, triple turned whore. Tis thou hast sold me this novice, and my heart makes only wars on thee. Bid them all fly. For when I am revenged upon my charm, all is done. Bid them all fly. Be gone. O sun, thy uprise shall I see no more. Fortune and Antony part here. Even here, do we still shake hands? All come to this? The hearts that spanieled me at heels, to whom I gave their wishes, do to scanty melt their sweet on blossoming Caesar, and this pine is barked. Betrayed I am. Oh, this false soul of Egypt, this grave charm, whose eyes backed forth to my wars and called them home, whose bosom was my crownet, my chief end, a gypsy, a bright gypsy, hath it fast and loose, be gilded to the heart I lost. What arrows, arrows! Betrayal of a triple tamed whore. Betrayal, so you speak, inadequacy that you repeat. A feeling of inferior denomination within realms of sex based humiliation. For a poetry slam, you betray who you can while I continue to dream about making you regret your entire being. Watch me waste my time on a man who will think he is mine. People gather round to see that you will never be as good as me. Good morning, my son. Good morning, my life. Good warning, my shrew of hatred sent into spite. A long lost love which I did not exceed, no one else will come through for me. Words you speak, cut so deep, I can barely feel your intention speak. A triple tamed whore is who I'm portray, while a double deep douche is who you betray. Anyone except for you will I ever obey. 
The monster you are makes my feelings hurt hard. Hiding from a monster is draining. Maybe I just need a certain session to this period of time in which I rhyme, trying to get across the point that I am worth it. My body count, my weight, the dreams I try to create are all but a depiction of how surreal the reality behind my ego begins to deflate. Continuing to allow men of your pace the opportunity to break me down deep down below the surface and break down the interior walls behind my face. It's almost as treacherous as the fear women possess in regards to the toxic masculinity that you would hear. Throwing myself to the birds in an anxious attempt to block out your intolerant words, Antony, my lust, remember that I'm the one who beats you to the power chain in this old memory den. Do you think that this is over? Oh no, it has just started to begin. Slut shame me and realize that there's no one else here who will be as smart or an immortalized rather than thee. As your foe continue to call me a hoe, keep in mind that my revenge will be thorough. And open your eyes to see that this was never an issue, at least not to me.